So you have an Intercore 5 Ultra, 245K or 245KF, and uh, everybody's saying these CPUs are not a good buy, you know, the performance is not the best. Well, it turns out they're a lot better if you overclock them, and if you want to do that, you're in the right place. Welcome back at the Motion PSUs, and here we are with the Core Ultra 5 overclocking tutorial. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how you can get a lot of extra performance out of your CPU in gaming too, but also in productivity. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it all. Little disclaimer though, these CPUs are very efficient, but if you wanna push them to the maximum, they put out quite a bit of extra heat. So you want a good cooler to do this and to have satisfying results. If you are very much there with your cooler, it's actually better you undervolt your CPU. And if you want, I have a guide over there on how to undervolt it, okay? This is, if you have a good cooling, good motherboard, and you wanna get more performance out of it. Now, this is gonna work for every single motherboard out there. Azus, MSI, Gigabyte, Azrock, Biostar, it doesn't matter, from the cheapest to the most expensive one, but you need a Z-series chipset, so you cannot do this on B860. If you have that, again, undervolting guide. So a good cooling system, Z-series motherboard, and we can get started. Now, you're gonna get a lot of extra FPS. We are expecting a gain of nearly 10% in games. And if you do RAM tuning, you're then gonna get even more, but RAM tuning is a bit trickier. You need certain RAM. I'm gonna have a dedicated video for it. If you put it all together, overclocking and RAM tuning, in some games, you're getting 20% extra performance, which is massive. So let's go into BIOS, let's get started. But before, promise me one thing, okay? So if the video will end up being helpful, you will drop a like and subscribe at the end of it, if it's helpful. If it's not, just tell me I don't know how to do stuff, okay? Let's go in the BIOS. Okay, so here we are in the BIOS. Now let's get started with the actual overclocking, okay? So first off, we're gonna go into the advanced mode, which is gonna be a bit different depending on what your motherboard is. In my case, you press F7 and you go into it, just like this. And now we wanna go on the overclocking tab. And now anything we do is gonna be here, pretty much. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and enable your XMP because if you're not doing that, you're losing performance. So just go on XMP and enable it. Now your RAM is running at full speed. Now you want to test the stability of this separately. I can't stress this enough, okay? So after you enable this, just save it, go into Windows, test it out, see if it's working, then come back and let's actually overclock, okay? I will have a full RAM tweaking tutorial, but it's long. I'm working on it, it's not so easy. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do it if you have CUDIM, UDIM RAM, and you're gonna get a lot of extra performance. But for the moment, just enable the XMP and stay tuned for the full video. Now, let's actually go ahead and overclock our CPU. Now, this thing is a lot more difficult to overclock than all the platforms, but I need you guys to try and do a lot of tests on, by yourself as well. I'm just giving you guidelines. So, first of all, lot, most motherboards have a performance preset when they let you unlock the power limit. So, go in it. In my case, it's MSI performance preset and put it on MSI unlimited settings, okay? First step. Second step, go in advanced CPU configuration. And now, we cannot disable the e-cores because if we do that, we're gonna lose the cache and the PC is gonna run a lot worse. So I'm just telling you guys. And we wanna disable the enhanced turbo. This is not helping us. Now, if you wanna just unlock your CPU even more, you have like a very, very good cooling system. You wanna go on the power limits and put all nines into them. But if you have a standard cooling system, don't do this, okay? So just if you have like custom water cooling loop, do this. All the other ones of you, don't do this. CPU DLVR is a very important setting. Now, basically on this kind of platform, they put a filter that's filtering the voltage coming in to the one going to your P cores, pretty much, keeping it simple. Now, disabling the filter is gonna be massive for what you can do but I'm telling you later, because it gets really tricky. So at the moment, just leave it on auto, okay? We we're coming back later on. Now we wanna go back and start overclocking, okay? So for the Core Ultra 5, it boosts all the way up to 5.2 on all cores. So ideally, we wanna achieve a 5.2 gigahertz all core frequency. By do that, we go on the Pico ratio and put 52. Now this is gonna be a pretty good achievement if you do. Not every single CPU is gonna do this. If your CPU can't do this, put 51. If you face instability, it's very likely gonna be the Pico ratio, okay? So just, this is the first thing you wanna change. But if you wanna just try, see if you're lucky, put 52. Then, we wanna go ahead and overclock our E-cores, which we can gain a lot of performance there as well. So for the E-cores, what we're actually doing is putting them on 46, okay? So they can run 4.6 gigahertz. Now again, this is gonna massively 
boost your productivity performance and it's going to help you in games too because the scheduler in Windows is not the best unfortunately so far so very important to do this but the most important setting overall is going to be your cash ratio okay so your max ring ratio over here or ring ratio simply as it's called in my BIOS so we want to change this to 4.2 gigahertz okay this is going to be a massive performance boost but again you need to check all of this for stability NGU ratio CPU D to D ratio they make a tiny difference but not enough to be worth your time okay their Bauer said it well uh, it's just not worth it so don't bother but we now want to find a voltage which will allow us to run this setting stable so if you're just very new to overclocking basically those three things we changed so CPU frequency P core E core frequency and then the cache is what actually gets us the performance gain what now we want is a stable voltage that's going to allow us to run this without our pc exploding okay so uh, we go on the voltage settings and first of all we, we want to go into the digital pwm features and find the load line calibration now in your bios if you don't have an msi motherboard it may not be here but it's still going to be called load line calibration you want to set this to a middle mode so this is the graph the higher the load the more close to the real voltage we are we want a bit of v droop but not too much basically just put it to mode 4 but really in between what you have uh, you may also want to try mode 3 mode 3 or mode 4 you can play around if your system is just slightly unstable with mode 4 just put mode 3 it's gonna be stable now v core doesn't exist anymore we now have vcc core voltage mode which is the voltage being fed to the actual motherboard and then we have p core voltage which is the voltage being fed to the actual cpu we want to put both on override because we are doing a static overclock i don't like dynamic overclocks and now for the VCC core voltage, I recommend an absolute maximum of 1.38. Okay, I'm saying maximum. And then for the P core, we want a maximum of 1.28. You can actually go all the way to 1.3 with this. Okay, these are not Intel's maximum. They are my personal maximum. Okay, so I wouldn't really go higher than this as total voltage. And um, I genuinely believe if this is not stable for you, you should just reduce your clocks don't increase your voltage or we're gonna end up like uh, the 14th gen intel issue okay if you know what i'm talking about so on the other hand you want to lower this as much as you can so if you just now save and exit this is gonna run for you okay uh, but you want to test it under full load like prime 95 occt just check if it's stable now if it's stable you want to lower these so I recommend just keeping the 100 millivolt delta between them and then just lowering them one at a time in 10 millivolt steps. So if you just now close the BIOS, save the settings and it's stable, come back into the BIOS, lower it by 10 and this one too. I did 20 now just, just, just to be sure and keep going until you crash. When you crash, give it back 10 more so let's say I go all the way down and I manage to get 1.3 here 1.2 here and then it crashes then I go back into the BIOS I put 1.3 10 over here and 1.2 10 over here and I have a stable overclock and now if it was my personal PC I would go just uh, 20 so ju ju just give it an extra 10 for good measure over what we found to be stable and this is our settings for overclocking and uh, again if this doesn't work for you you probably don't have a good enough cooler or you have to lower our numbers over here which impact our performance you need to try them one by one I know it's annoying but it's complex platform but if you do this right you're gonna get a PC running with just a tiny bit more power consumption and a lot more performance which is what we want tutorial is basically finished but if you're still here after all this boring talk I'm gonna tell you about the DLVR as well so DLVR also called power gate if you disable this basically the two voltages which we were talking about down here are going to be the same so these two are going to be the same so this is going to allow you theoretically to have less of a voltage spread and reduce your temperature but this you need to test on your own so if that's the case i recommend you go with dlvr disabled you just give it a little bump over your p core voltage and then you test stability from there so i recommend first of all you find stability with dlvr enabled then you disable it and you see what it is but if you want to just copy it and just start it with dlvr off i recommend you start with 1.3 just as a starting point keeping the 5.2 4.8 etc 
on the rest. And uh, usually keep my tutorial short, but this time it was a bit longer because it's complex platform, but I hope you, we can also use the comments to get better together. So if you have any kind of issues, please drop a comment. I try to read them all, especially on the overclocking tutorials. I want to help you guys out. And uh, if the video was helpful and if I could help you out even a little bit, maybe drop a like and a follow, subscribe, so I can uh, bring you guys more content. And uh, really, just uh, let's discuss in the comment about overclocking, what you achieve as frequency. And I hope to see you guys again in another video. Bye bye.